well. <laughs> Shall I? Yes. Well, you're a bit sharp, John. Oh, hi. Jimmy Tarbox here. Voice is off. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Looking pretty smart and, smart and suave yourself. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> you are. Well, Fresh they, as a they daisy. Were, these were, this outfit was in the room next door where I was staying, so I thought that'll do. Oh, we've and taken... I just put it on. Who did it belong to, do you know? God knows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it fits, so it's great. It's lovely to have Jimmy here at six decades in his career. He's worked with the best in the business, uh, Bruce Forsyth, Ronnie Corbett. And last night, well, who did he work with? The one, the only... Barry Manilow, you were opening for Barry, weren't you, last night? Not singing. Just, we're going to talk to Jimmy in just a second, but first, let's take a little look back at his fabulous career. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet Jimmy Tarver. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, please, please, please don't stop. Come on, please, please. Thank you. Cease. Wow. You see, I had to go to the doctor myself today. He said, Jimmy, you've got to stay off television for a year. I said, why? What's wrong with me? He said, nothing. I just can't stand you. He said, stay off for a year. <laughs> This is my blue book, and it's something like Aspel's red book, except in ours, we leave all the embarrassing bits in. And I can tell you, this book, it right. don't lie. Hey, thank God you've come up, the blooming boat's going down. You've got to be joking, you will have to provoke it. You've got to be joking, we He was lovely, he should have had a knighthood. Little Corbett. Why was he so lovely? I know you loved him very much. What well, was he was so... Um, he was a captain in the RAF, you know, and... Uh, well, he was just correcting all he did. He was just... that would be No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't like that. And I used to play golf with him regularly, and the last time we played, God rest him, we had nine holes and he fell in six. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> oh, I loved him. I loved him, the little fella, yes. The little fella. We were just talking about golf, watching some of those clips, and you were saying that, I mean, it kind of took over your life at times, didn't it? Well, one time too much. I used to get up and just go and play golf and practice. And I got in uh, the British seniors at Royal Lytham and St Anne's, wonderful golf mm. course. And I was walking to get to the first hole, which is a par three, not to bore your, your viewers. And the voice went, Jimmy, can you break 80? I said, yes. And I looked around, it was Arnold Palmer. Oh, oh wow. And I just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was God, you know, a hero and a lovely man. Yeah. And, uh, and he knew your name. Well, 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 I played with him on one of those BBC celebrity games. And I played with him in California in the Bob Hope tournament. And uh, just a very nice man. Is it true? It was Michael Parkinson who told you to leave the golf well, a bit. Well, he, he just said to me, he said, you're concentrating on golf too much. Get back to show business. And I went on Parky's show and I had a good night. It worked for me. And all of a sudden I said, I should be doing this. <laughs> and ever since I've done that and, uh, you know, I'm getting on now, but it, it's... Uh, it's a joy to have a game. My son's a good player. He's three handicap. And uh, he kills me now. I can't, <laughs> can't live with him. And uh, I love seeing the game now. It's the only game we could all play when we're in our 80s. If you play with people of the same level as you, you can make, make it competitive. But you can't go out with a young fella of 20 because he'll hit it 100 yards past you. <laughs> but, I mean, you're saying that. I mean, you look incredibly well. I'm fine, thank and you. And you were up last night at the new co-op live place in Manchester with Barry Manilow. I mean, you're still working yeah, really hard. Work? Well, is that an asset to <laughs> Manchester, this uh, place, this arena? It, it is was wonderful. Now. 25,000 in there, packed, 
And a little girl, got, I was getting in the lift this morning, she went, I saw you last night. She said, you look that big? <laughs> well, of course, from the back. I mean, it's bigger than this, your studios. How does it work, Jimmy? If you are basically the opening act for Barry Manilow, are we expecting songs, dancing? Not from the old boy here. Come on. I just said yes. They said, would you go on? I said, it's a great it's a pleasure. He's a very fine performer, but what he is, he's a good showman. Mm. And he does it very well. Has a great band with him, dancers, and they love him. Here he is, look. There's the man himself. There he is. There's only a few guys, great respect now, of his age, who can still sing. And the best one, I think, in the world is Tom Jones. Don't tell him that. <laughs> oh, no, well, I, I, yeah, yeah, I won't. But th th this boy's great, and I'm doing 15 shows um, at the Palladium. Of course. Where else? Well, that's my favourite, and I think it's the most famous theatre in the world because the Americans don't say the Palladium. Oh, the London Palladium? The London Pal And everywhere you go. And I've been lucky, uh, un uncommonly lucky, and I get asked, do you take drugs? Only one. And it's called laughter. And it's been like that for 60 years. Don't ask me why, but these people have given me uh, strength in a lot of things when I wasn't too well. I got these letters and that, and it was... Very moving. And I thought, dear Lord, and uh, they're, I mean, they're lovely. The people are lovely saying hello. Will you have a drink? And I don't usually, but I do. <laughs> are you allowed? <laughs> yeah. And here I am with you. You in a new suit. <laughs> yeah. Now tell me, Sally. You, uh... <laughs> we should have got you a purple tie as well this you morning. We're all wearing our yeah. purple ties. And she looks well. Shouldn't you be at school today? Oh, very good. <laughs> oh, very... I've always loved you, Jimmy. <laughs> what was it like backstage with Barry Manilow then? What did you chat about? Uh, he, he... I'll tell you what happened exactly. I got on and I, I, I came off and he was in the corridor waiting to get on. He said, did you wow him? I said... Did OK. Not 10 out of 10, but 8 out of 10. <laughs> I did OK, and he was stood there. And I said, they're, they're waiting to see you. I said, go and sing a couple of my old hits, <laughs> which made him chuckle. <laughs> and so he, he, he went on, and got, I got a message in the dressing room. He wants you down there after the third song. He wants you to come on, and he'll thank you. I said, there's no need to do that. Well, he did that, and I was... Uh, so moved. you went on stage? And I went back and he said, I want to thank you. And, and I just laughed with him. I said, I'll look forward to seeing you. And we're, uh, we're at the Palladium, which is a thrill, especially to have a showman like him to be working with. It's, it's great the people I've worked with that I can't believe. I get asked who is the most talented person you introduced. That's easy. Go on. Sammy Davis Jr. He just did everything. Yeah. Lady... Judy Garland. You know, you, you, you look at people and you think, yeah, well, these are magnificent. You have met... The list of names yeah. so far this morning is astonishing. You've dropped so many, the floor is dented. <laughs> well, let me tell you about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, dead lucky. Uh, but if you work that palladium out, think you've worked there. Uh, Laurence Olivier... Margot Fontaine, The Beatles, Tom Jones, Bassey. You just keep going. The greats, Danny Kay, you know, Morecambe and Wise, all people you admire, and they all wanted to play the London Palladium. And it's a thrill, and uh, I got asked a week ago or 10 days ago, do you want to do 15 nights at the Palladium? I said, yes. Well, the money, I said, don't go, don't let you, you discuss the money. I said, I just want to walk on there again. And it's uh, like being... The first time I walked on there was in 1963. I was a kid. Terrified. I was going to say you were brave enough, though. Well, I was in Manchester the night before on Bernard Manning's club. I drove through the night and I went on... I was at the Palladium. And I thought, ah. Oh. And I'd been on with... Uh, Cannon and Ball. And they went, 
Jimmy's on the Palladium tonight. He said, but the, he was with us last <laughs> night, didn't he? And uh, it was just great. And it happened for me. And uh, I've played in the first division for uh, 60 years. A and long I'm, time. I'm very grateful to that. Oh, and brilliant. the honesty and uh, the support of the public have been mar marvellous to me. Do you still get nervous? I mean, yes, you, I was you very do. nervous do last night. Do you? Go on, yeah. what happens? I had the Charlie Drakes. Did you? Oh, yeah, well, take your time, take your time. Wow. But I can't wait for Thursday night, because we do the Palladium. And uh, as I said, my co-star on top of the bill, he is, is a superb man, he's a nice guy. And you're like, it's, it's nice to work with nice people. And maybe a different audience for you, I guess? Oh, totally. I mean, there's some ladies I was talking to last night. Yes. They're going to see him four times on four different nights. They're going for you, not him. <laughs> 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 but it's interesting, isn't it, because the, the generation of comedians that make it now, today, they come to fame and prominence and get the gigs by doing social media stuff, don't they? Little videos on TikTok and Instagram, oh, like. rather than playing the clubs and pubs like, like you and the other people you've talked to. Do you think if you'd been coming in 60 years later, do you think you'd have wanted to embrace that whole social media side of comedy? It's well, like, a... I, I don't know about that, but I, I did seek advice from the best. And uh, drop, I will drop names. Bob oh. Hobbs, you said to me, the first two minutes, let them look at the suit. And he said, never go on scruffy. And I never, I made a point in those days. I couldn't afford the suits, but I had them made and I paid weekly for them while I was on the clubs. And that and it suddenly built and built. And I did a show up here called Comedy Bandbox. Val Parnell saw it and said, put the kid on the Palladium next week. And in those days, I don't fib to you, it got 27 million viewers. Wow. Because there was only two stations to watch. There was none of yeah, this yeah. 60, 100 you can get now on your tellies. But then there was two. And it was wonderful. And uh, Bruce gave me a good introduction. I never dreamt that in uh, three years' time I'd be hosting the show. Yeah. And wonderful occasions and the royal shows there and uh, meeting the Queen... And she said uh, one day to me, how many of these have you done now? <laughs> and I said, four more than you, <laughs> being smart. And she said, it certainly seems like it tonight. <laughs> Whoa! Well, everybody oh roared. Goodness. And I just said, yeah, that's had yeah. Your, yeah. your hand smacked in that. <laughs> and she was, uh, well, a lovely lady. And I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, our king is uh, feeling a bit better. Yeah, it's good to know. And I'll send you my regards, sir. Oh, that's lovely. Jimmy, it's been fantastic to have you here. Brilliant memories and enjoy the Palladium. Well, I'm going to try. I think, we, I think you will. <laughs> I've enjoyed this morning with you oh, too. Oh, good. And, uh, We've enjoyed it too. Don't forget the four quid you owe me. Oh, right, OK. For the soup. He owes me more. No, that was too dear. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's lovely yeah. to see you. Yeah, great to see you, Jimmy. God bless. Yeah, what too. a class act. Uh, it's